Zach Morris is trash. The forum is packed. Casey Kasem interviews Zach Morris backstage about rock stardom. Zach's thrilled to be skipping school with a never-ending supply of young women to take advantage of. The rest of the gang's in the band, too. Freeze! Yeah, we'll see. Now back to where it all started for some reason. Yes, we will. That's enough of that. The band sounds fine, despite Zach. And Casey Kasem's in the garage, too? Sure, why not? Brian Fate, a record producer who certainly exists, was jogging by and heard their song. He wants to sign them. Brian's other teen band recently broke up as show business destroyed their friendship and lives. Zach sees no issue trusting this sweaty garage invader. Oh. No thanks. The rest of the band carry Zach, who brings nothing to the table except an unwavering commitment to be sub-average. When they get studio time any group would kill for, Zach's distracted by the first lady he sees. The band's named Zach Attack, because Zach is an egomaniac who is also bad at band names. Their publicist Mindy says they sold 5 million copies of their horseball's melody. But are they still friends? We're friends first and nothing could ever come between us. Yeah, we'll see. Zach hits on Mindy in front of everyone while she's at work. Michael Jorkson and Maduna award Zach Attack some award. Everyone makes heartfelt speeches thanking friends and family. Zach uses this moment to creep on Mindy and thank everyone for listening to my music. I mean our music. Smooth. Lisa designed new costumes for the group. Mindy got a real designer to handle wardrobe. Zach bails on his childhood friend for a woman he met at breakfast. Mindy tells Zach he's a star who won't need those losers soon. Zach wonders how soon. Zach distributes a song he co-wrote with Mindy. The band's confused. Mindy isn't a member or a writer. Kelly Slater and Screech wrote a song, maybe let's try that. Mindy farts about it. They do their song. It has potential. Zach scoffs with Mindy, then tells them to get with the program. Despite being being disrespected, the band does their best effort to polish the musical loose turd they've been handed. As the press reports on a growing divide, Zach furiously demands to know who's been using their First Amendment rights to tell the truth, then has the audacity to say this to the saints who tolerate his daily mission to waste oxygen. She is the best thing that ever happened to me. Brian urges them to pause and go play their biggest concert ever in five minutes. But Zach keeps picking at this open wound he caused, then shamelessly asks for validation that he's a good person. You've changed, Zach. She's right. She's wrong. He's always been a dixical. Zach reflects on his trusted friends presenting a harsh reality for like one second, then abandons them at showtime and says they'll fail without him. Mindy does make Zach a star, a cartoon dancing monkey doofus of a star. You couldn't even hear a word I sang. Sounds like an improvement. Zach hears Slater, now a race car driver, was hospitalized. Zach suddenly decides he's ready to be a friend again if it means he can quit another job. Zach marches into Slater's hospital room in sunglasses, a sequin blazer, and zero shirt to say he's no longer a man who makes bad choices. Zach phones in an apology nobody buys, leaving Screech to rebuild his burnt bridges. There's a shameless money-grab reunion tour, the final page of Zach's scumbag musician playbook. The concert is fine. Or it would be if it ever happened. The whole thing was just a dream in Zach's bland blonde brain. So even in his wildest fantasies, he's a miserable failure who ruins the lives of those closest to him. Let's review. Zach Morris put his friendship in the hands of a man who says he destroys friendships, then named their band after an STD you get on spring break, and sexually harassed his publicist into a relationship, and took all the credit for their success, before turning his back on his closest allies for a pair of butt cheeks. After he couldn't bully them into silence, Zach deserted his friends when they needed him the most, and couldn't stick the landing on his embarrassing solo career, and couldn't even take the time to put a shirt on for his apology after his decision-making put Slater in the hospital. Plus, he made us sit through a fucking dream episode? Unforgivable. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash.